Okay. Now I am here and waiting for my other people to show up. which might be a minute because we're still all getting used to how this goes. I'm working on making sure everybody has the information they need for those who are going to be in the meeting portion. And I think some other people should be here soon. Notes up. And I think that's okay because I don't think anybody is watching the live stream yet either. Hello. Hi. It is on the live stream and recording. Um, just waiting for everybody else. And while we're waiting for everybody else, I need to actually go grab my crochet pattern because it'll be so much easier to crochet that way. And I love your hair. Oh, thank you. I am returned. Hi, Erica. How are you? All right. Wonder if we're getting our other people. Well, they should be. They were in the chat. They should yeah, be there. Oh, we have a Karen. Open up my notes. I took way better notes on the first, first, forced, forced, is, yeah. Took, <laughs> warm up the words. Took way better notes on the first story than on the second story. <laughs> and I read them three weeks ago. So <laughs> this, is, oh, this is the exact difference between us. You're like just having fun doing this with me, and you read them three weeks ago. I am actively leading this and I finished the second one today. <laughs> I just finished it now, so. Hey. <laughs> All the different kinds of people here. Oh my gosh, so good, so good. And I am just going to throw this out for everybody, which you two already know, but anybody watching, I am just getting over COVID. 
and I'm still coughing some. Not as not nearly as much as I was before. So hopefully it will not be disruptive. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better. So much better. Just like the past two or three days, honestly. It wasn't that last year when I had COVID, it was like dying for five weeks. Yeah, this year yeah. it was one week of like a bad cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so way, yeah. way better. I, I had it back in 20. Uh, 20 and I don't want it again no thanks yeah no <laughs> I, I didn't want it again I didn't want it the first time but <laughs> um, uh, we're gonna be putting a brace on my wrist simply because my wrist hurts um so. and actually I found that using a hot packet hand warmer with my brace just makes it feel the best nice so. And I decided my craft of today is resin. <laughs> what? Resin. Oh, nice. I love resin. Yeah, I've been working on uh, gummy bears. I'm, I'm working on a, like, design, a, like, um, what's the word? Inventing a construction of sort. Oh, my gosh, that's so cute. Right? Oh, I'm <laughs> making a uh, red one today. I'm working on on this um, design. Is that I'm not actually wearing. I'm not wearing my Jane Austen jewelry with my Jane Austen shirt that has actual quotes from Pride and Prejudice all over it. Um, but I have a Jane Austen necklace which I will be putting. Um, I'll be listing it in the shop, and it's um, done like a cameo. Oh yeah, with, with um, like a printed page and then resin. And then I have like little paper books that I make with it that I coat in resin, but you can't coat all the way around in resin mm. without something looking funky someplace or other, or it, you can hang it up and then it ends up with a drip on the bottom. So I, I got like a, a nine the, the, the drip off. Yeah. You can. So, so this is my brain. <laughs> I'm like I could sit there and do that every time or I can take like hours and hours and all this money and invent something so that I then don't have to sit there and do that every time but um, I got a, a little nine rpm motor and I'm like attaching a dowel to it and I'm building a box for it with these um plexiglass sheets basically and then um, I'm going to put like clips along it so that I can make my jewelry pieces and clip the the eye screw or eye pin into the clips and then have it like slowly rotating like a rotisserie so that it can dry and rotate and not be dripping. Nice. That's the theory. We'll see if it works out after all this. All right, let me see if anybody else has said anything. Yeah, I should message Lisa. Lisa I was just about to say. I don't know if she even finished the book or not, so. Maybe. Checking with Becca. Got Lisa. Yeah, I see we've got Lisa. I'm checking with Becca. Oh, I just about to message Lisa and Pepper. Oh. All right. Try to get to stay. <laughs> well, everybody who we've got here, does everybody want to talk oh, about what you're working on tonight? Erica, you can start if you want. Oh, okay. Because you're in the top left corner for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been working on a series of art pieces um, called my Classics with Cats series, and each one is based on a classic book. And I'm doing it like a movie poster, but all the characters are cats. Um, and I will be doing a, a 2023 calendar of these. I've already done six of them that have been up in my shop for a while. And I've been, I'm working on, I'm working on the next one of those. So I'll, I'll show you some of the ones that I finished that are right here. So this, this is the cat of Monte Cristo. I just, I just finished this last week. I just finished, oh, oh, um, yeah. Catula. <laughs> um, uh, a cat girl. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite is 
Marley's ghost. <laughs> wait, 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 I want to see Marley's ghost again. I, didn't, I, I looked at this before, but I didn't focus in on it's Marley's. So cute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, then, and then the ghost of Christmas. Yeah, this is just the best. The ghost of Christmas yet to come here, where you, you don't see any face, but the ears are poking up. <laughs> so the one I'm working on today, I just finished the pencil sketch last night, and I'm doing the inking. I'm going to get as far as I can on the inking today, um, but I'm doing Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. And he's holding, he's holding a kitty skull. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Do I have? Hold on, I have, I have to look. That's what I'm working on today. Oh, I don't have. I, I think it, I have that tote bag from when you did the Pride and Prejudice one before, <laughs> but I think it's, those. I think it's in my room upstairs. Oh my goodness! I just ended up like giving away the rest. Of the, the tote bags never sold. People begged me to do tote bags, and then the tote bags just. It's my not favorite, but I don't use it very often because I was using it all the time and it started to wear through. And I was oh, like, no, no I must retain, retain this forever. So I don't use it very often anymore. I think it's got yarn in it up in my bedroom right now. <laughs> oh no. Lisa, you said you're working on resin. You're working on the, the gummy bears. Yeah, um, but Karen, not I meant to say Karen. In my brain, I said Karen. I swear, I do know you two. Yeah. Also, you have the like Um, have these? Like, oh, that's so pretty. And uh, mm. we're gonna be doing it with this diamond rose. Oh, nice. And uh, how well that's like gonna. The, Karen, you beauty, in the, like the beauty and the Beast rose. That's what I was thinking as soon as I saw it. I saw them like. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I have some keys too. Um, I've been doing lots of stuff for Valentine's Day. So I've got some keys in hearts. Mm -hmm. That one's strings that got pink on it. I don't know why, it just does. And I can find the crystal key that I just did. It's bigger than all the others. It didn't fit in the heart mold, so it ended up in a. Oh, that's mold. really pretty. Yep. I like that. Yep. And then, of course, these are the green gummy bears. <laughs> Cute. I love it. And I have purple gummy bears. I'm working on red today. These are the purple ones. So. Sorry, I don't stay still very well. It's super good for being on camera. <laughs> I'm also going to be trying to remake these because they did not come out the way I wanted. They're just basically little tags. Oof. Um, so they got like a little hole, but they didn't come out the way I wanted. Oh, well. Is that a goldfish? It, no, looks like just, a, it looks like a goldfish in a bowl. It kind of does. It's just sparkles. It looks like a goldfish. I, I see the goldfish now. <laughs> No. It's cute though. Thank you. All right, Lisa, what are you working on? Uh, well, I'm trying to work on some uh, plastic canvas coasters, but um, puppy well, doesn't like that plan. I need more attention. <laughs> Always, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, see, like I've got, I've got so many. I got four different types of coasters, but I have my heart ones. They're pink and red. Those and then pink. I've got my actual heart-shaped ones. And then you I got striped ones that I don't have it? here. You know, working huh? on the giveaway there. Yeah? Mm, I'm no, uh, cause I need my watch a YouTube video to figure out the next part. So I can't uh, really do that and do a live at the same time. So <laughs> I just want to show these off real quick. So I was making a bunch of Valentine's Day stuff, and I made candle holders. Oh, cool. With candy hearts in them. That's yeah. really But like, I just love the but, way that this came out. Yeah. And uh, there's this one too. I like oh. them. Those are pretty. Yeah. I'm really so, proud of those. I am working on um, a lace table runner for my sister's wedding that is the end of March that I told her like a year ago I'd work on this for her. <laughs> oh, no. so I figured I should get started um oh, <laughs> actually so I did I did start it 
And then um, I needed the crochet thread, which Karen and Lisa is actually the old cotton um, weaving yarn for our stuff at work. Um, oh. <laughs> Pete told me that I could take it to crochet with, or like I could take one of each color to crochet with. So I have like the whole spool of, of the white weaving yarn. Um, <laughs> but it's very very good crochet thread um and um there and so I had started it and then I needed that for something else and then um hi Becca and then hi. When, hi. when um I went to to get back to it and reattach the yarn to the project something had gotten spilled all over it because I'm super organized and it was sitting in a very, very safe place oh. next to my bed. Um, <laughs> and so, so I went back <laughs> to the pattern and the pattern is no longer available um, oh, no. for free online, but I found like a fairly blurry crochet chart that I'm going oh. to attempt to follow. <laughs> Good luck. So, I, I'm really just making two of these and putting them together and then I'm just gonna make it up around the outside of that. So this is oh, going to be my go. focus for the next month or so. <laughs> I do. I also want to show you, hopefully I'll be wearing this next time we meet. Um, I'm working on a, I only have one side of the separated leg. Um, I'm, I'm working on a, a jewelry piece. I'm going to be cutting this out of um, sterling silver Ooh. and um, the parts that that overlap, I'm gonna just um, kind of uh, scratch a groove into it. And then I've got like a separate piece like that that I'm going to put together and I'm gonna put like gem eyes in um, so that it has like Ooh. a leg coming up like this and the leg coming up like this going on. I'm nice. contemplating maybe with the other legs um, attaching a, a chain up from each of them to, to go up to the edge of the necklace also. Ooh. So I'm working on that to go with our Lovecraftian theme. Nice. Very nice. Becca, what you working on today? Um, I'm working on this little guy. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> Got him on the phone. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna him. give him little like red mushrooms and stuff like that, but I have to finish him first. Oh, that's cute. That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> Making gummy bears. <laughs> gummy bears are adorable <laughs> um okay so we read um <laughs> we read two stories and uh, lisa definitely told me at work today the exact same reaction that i had to our first story uh, oh, uh, dagon. dagon 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 i think dagon. It's i'm going with dagon let's go with dagon <laughs> um the the our our collective initial reaction being to start reading and go, am I reading a suicide note? That's <laughs> well, basically what it was. Yeah. It basically, was exactly yes. what, what? That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, which um, I, <laughs> suffice it to say, I don't always do well with um, stories regarding suicide. So as far as I'm concerned, this whole thing was happening in the mind of a mental patient who was safely locked in a room that he could not jump out of. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I can't put my glove on with my brace on. <laughs> a morphine-filled fantasy. That's what it was. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to give a quick... Um, summary of this um and does somebody i'll ask you now so that you're prepared when we get to it um does somebody want to give our summary of um the statement of was it randolph carter i'm really bad at names um, i just read them it's fine um, yes, anyway, somebody, does somebody want to do that summary for me when we get to it if not i'll do it because i didn't actually ask anybody ahead of time tonight well i just read it the freshest i can do it <laughs> it's nice and fresh <laughs> all right so quick Mine, summary which i read three weeks ago and so i mean 
<laughs> in my heart. Not, these were both like about dead and decaying things and one of them was very yes. fishy. So I'm not sure that we want the one that's about three weeks old, all things considered. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be coughing again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be able to stop now. laughing at that one. <laughs> um, okay, so quick overview of Dagon. Um dude doesn't dude who's who's threatening to kill himself and I am absolutely convinced did not. Um <laughs> does doesn't um know for certain the veracity of everything that he remembers but he remembers being lost at sea after um the ship that he was on got essentially pi 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 piracied pi pirated it in um <laughs> 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 it's at sea and they're they're thieves it's piracy <laughs> it's still not a verb i don't know how to say it um i was just Health watching a tic i was just watching a tiktok today about why the adhd <laughs> brain has trouble uh, retrieving yeah. the correct words at times so <laughs> um, but anyway yeah um so people people stole the ship he managed to escape his captors because they were super lax and um, then he was trying to figure out how to actually get to anywhere and he's a crappy navigator so he didn't know how to and then he what if he never escaped them and <gasps> the whole thing was in his head when he was on the boat okay we're coming back to that one um, <laughs> so, so then he like fell asleep and woke up like totally stranded in the middle of a like drying but not dry land um like it so just popped up so like he falls asleep and there's water all around him but when he wakes up it's basically mud with water ripples in it it's like it all right. turned it's like it just yeah. just came up out of the water all yeah, yeah. underneath yeah. directly underneath him like and it stunk <laughs> like fish which was a hilarious detail that he kept emphasizing um well i mean is, he did say that there were fish, fish corpses on it okay that too. <laughs> I don't know. The way that he said it, I questioned whether they were actually there or whether, because he was like, he was, he said like the, the smell of the, the rotting corpses or something like that. I'm trying to remember. And <laughs> like not sideways, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so, so finishing the actual summary and then we can actually do the talking about. Um, so basically, he, it, it stunk. He was walking along. He found, trying to find something or someone or somewhere and he found this giant cavern and then um once he went down it on the other side of a like basically lake that was at the bottom of it was this giant fish person worshiping while well, there was a giant sculpture and then a giant fish person came out and was worshiping the sculpture and then he went insane and that's all he remembers until he woke up in the hospital basically oh i thought he saw the god that they were worshiping i read it as he saw that god that they were worshiping yeah, and I, yeah, into they, the monolith. yeah yeah i thought that the the fish creature that he saw was actually the the god i didn't think there was anybody else worshiping oh, him, though was there i don't, I don't think, think so could, i think he came up just, out of the pool the that he saw well mm -hmm. it said yeah it was like the fish the giant fish person like like the like the sculpture but it came up and like wrapped its arms around the sculpture that sounds mm -hmm. to me more like like it was worshiping the sculpture mm. sculpture i mean it could have been it could be completely narcissistic and worshiping itself and like i yeah, love it's possible <laughs> well either that or it was um using that as kind of like a conductor to take in any worship that other people were giving it yeah yeah uh, yeah I could have been trying to get out of the, the pond and so that's it was using that as like kind of like something to pull itself out yeah wow i think one of the cool things about, about this writing style is just that we're not actually told what the different things actually are we're just told what happened right right we're just yeah. given the whole this is what it happened and the the whole interpretation of what was what was the fish creature doing? What, how did, how did he get all of the what's and why's and how's? Those are all really left up to our imagination and interpretation. All we're given exactly. of, what, of what the character, who's sometimes an unreliable narrator actually saw. 
I'd, I'd say in both of these unreliable narrator for these two, yeah, yeah. two stories yeah. at least. What what were you starting to say? Somebody? I don't I didn't catch who was starting to talk. I just heard well. <laughs> yeah, like uh, <laughs> the unreliable narrator here. Yeah. Um so I did make a couple of, of notes of um some of the different uh meanings of a couple of different things that were put in or some of the um, end notes that were put in about them. Um, first, um, it said that he was a supercargo, which to my um, American brain sounds like he was the best cargo there was. And I was pretty sure that wasn't that. Um, basically just supervisor of the cargo is <laughs> what that means. Um, and um, typically a representative of the owner. Um, the reference to the degradation to which Germans sank later, it says that this was before they sank to the to their later degradation. Um, that's in reference to the sinking of the Lusitania. So mm -hmm. it happened before that. Um, he, it was something that Lovecraft apparently wrote about frequently. He particularly disparaged um, that particular act, the sinking of the Lus Lusitania, as being a sign that the Germans had just gone way too far in World War One, hmm. um, and um, also <laughs> um, the reason that I mentioned that he kept talking about the smell of the fish is because Lovecraft himself absolutely despised fish. Yeah, so, yeah. Which, to which I really got that. <laughs> to which I say, same. <laughs> <laughs> cannot stand seafood I don't even like going to the ocean I like like the sand and everything but the ocean just smells too much like dead fish it makes me oh, so sad <laughs> I live in Maine oh, sorry, I should use like, like fish seafood, right? <laughs> <laughs> sorry I okay so yeah, um okay so this is where I hit my first real question as we were going through it when he when the like land had come up underneath him and it sounds from the way he describes it like he was thrown out of his boat like he he had landed some distance away from his boat and thus was just in this muck and dead fish and grossness all around him and the boat was like over there on its side from the sound of things and I can't figure out why this happened like like it's on its side he reasonably would have rolled but the way he describes it sounded like he was like not close to it I ran into that when I was looking stuff up about the story and apparently this was something that like people questioned what he was doing with this story because he never actually said he crawled back to the boat. And he was just like, of course he crawled back to the boat. That was implied. <laughs> well, he kind of says he, he vaguely remembers getting back to the boat. Yeah, yeah. And at the end. But um, it's, not, it's not given in the actual sequence of action right then. Wait, which, which time? The beginning when he's hiding in the boat? At the beginning. At the beginning, when it's when he's when it's telling, he woke up and this was where he was, and then, yeah, yeah, then the, yeah, he does just skip that um, completely. <laughs> so so great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, strain my ears as I might, which also intrigued me because when he runs back to the boat at the end, he then gets back in the ocean. Um. And when he see, but at first when he wakes up, he can't see the ocean anywhere. Exactly. And yeah. like he went, he went back to the boat and then just like took off into the ocean at the end as far, but he can't really remember exactly what happens. He's yeah. like, I know yeah. what insane. Yeah. And I think I was probably laughing and singing and something. And then I got back to the boat and apparently back in the ocean. So I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe the water sank back out from, I mean, the land sank back out yeah. from underneath him. My theory, my theory truly is that from the moment when he wakes up and the water is mud and, and just mud that this is all just in his head i agree <laughs> but if we wanted to go the other way and say yeah. that this actually happened then 
I think that the best explanation or most reasonable explanation would be that the land had to have sunk back out from under him because I don't, mm. he wasn't finding the tide, the tide came back in or something. But maybe the tide came back in when he was exploring the, the pool. But also it, it kind mm-hmm. of had to be in his imagination because imagine what kind of a, a like tidal wave it would cause to have something like that. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> So well, kind of to coincide with that too, um, mm-hmm. it could also be a nod to um, kind of like those moments where you have like the out of body experience, but mm-hmm. like almost a purgatory esque mixed with a dream. Mm-hmm. <gasps> mm-hmm. What if he? What if he like accidentally went into an alternate dimension for a little while? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what. That, yeah. Exactly. Like that's what that sounds like with the, or yeah, what, it, what it made that, me think of. Not that theory is also that theory is also also in keeping with the genre and with other things by this writer. Yeah. True, right. true. Yeah. Um, okay. I've read much more. I've read much more Poe than Lovecraft, and so Poe is much more likely to be like, and it was all in his head. If you yes. want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah (laughs) or like um like and there was a you know creepy but of this world explanation for it Mm -hmm. one Mm -hmm. one of those two Mm -hmm. um but um and yeah I've I've read a lot more Poe also um the other thing and I I mentioned this in our chat group but I wanted to talk about it here um it said in the end notes that um Dagon or Dagon or Dagon was not a Philistine fish god but was either a weather or vegetation deity stolen from the Canaanites and the historians at some point conflated it with the Semitic Dag dag on which I'm assuming is slightly different from the um American uh expression uh, in, as a replacement for a swear um <laughs> dang on um <laughs> i'm assuming <laughs> but <laughs> but um but now every time i i hear i don't know grandpa and hey arnold say that um i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to always think fish of sadness because that's what it means in the Semitic. <laughs> fish of sadness <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, Erica, oh you gosh. said you had looked a little bit more at that because I had been trying to look up more information about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, the, the word Dagon is used for a Philistine god in the Bible. And that's one of the yeah. very, that's actually one of the very, very few historical records we have of that word ever being used. Um, and so for a long, long time, as, as far as I can tell, right, it did not do like a deep, deep scholarly dive on this. But from what I can tell, um, the Hebrew word, is easily translated is similar to to the hebrew phrasing it's easily mistranslated fish of sadness and so because that was one of the only references we had to it people assumed that it was some sort of fish god when really it sounds like historical historically and archaeologically we found out that it wasn't a fish god to begin with if that makes sense it was just mistranslation of a word that sounded like like that and so for years and years and years popular lore which would have been what what Lovecraft would have been familiar with when he was writing it said that the Philistine god was a fish god um when now we've learned that that was a mistranslation right okay that yeah that was that was what I found and again I I did not do like a really respectable scholarly dive on that I just did like a 20 minute (laughs) internet dive yeah my my 20 more than most people will do my 20 minute internet dive, which probably was like 10 because did I mention ADHD brain? Um, it felt like at least 20 minutes, but who knows? Um, but um, that just led me to either things in like first, probably because the algorithms are like, hey, she searches Dungeons and Dragons stuff all the time. Let's bring up results to that. <laughs> fantasy type stuff rather than like historical type everything stuff. everything I found oh was goodness. either Dungeons and Dragons or it was actually directly talking about those exact end notes of this book <laughs> those were the only results so I could find anyway. 
I mean, on, you're like, on, thanks, it's on fine. Page one of a Google search anytime <laughs> I found a different wording for it. <laughs> Never went beyond page one anyway. Um, so um, I do want to say um, I had, and I had mentioned this quite a while to all of you, but I did not give any sort of reminder. Um, I, I thought of it a lot of times when I was not in a place to say anything in Messenger. Um, <laughs> But um, I wanted to draw out um, a favorite quote from each story mm. if you have one. So if you don't uh, have one. Let's um, do that. Let's, I, I would have looked for one if I'd known I was supposed to, but I'm not yeah. going to sit here and come through my no. book. Well, no, chat. yeah. Um, but no, I did write one down for myself. Could, could um, we do that next time? Um, I don't yeah, think we, we, can, we can do that next time. I just wanted to read the one okay. that I had written down. I didn't okay. even write one down for the next story okay. either. Um, but I did write one down for this. And it's, it's not even the the topic or anything it's just the construction of the words and sentence I love it was um as he's approaching the cliff looking over the gulf and he says I felt myself on the edge of the world peering over the rim into the fathom of course my screen went black right then into the fathomless <laughs> chaos of eternal night <laughs> yeah that was I just, like that that particular sentence jumped out at me because whatever I can critique of, of Lovecraft's writing, he was a wordsmith with no yeah. doubt about it. The, the the sentences that he could craft just brilliant. I actually found it quite hard to read some of his stuff because I didn't know what half the words meant. Like, I, I definitely uh, looked up some words. <laughs> I'm a dictionary. Uh, but I really loved my, one of my favorite parts is when he was describing all the carvings on the monolith. Like that was just one of my favorite. Oh yeah. Um, let me just really fast see if I can. Uh, I, love the detail. I might not be able to find it fast enough for it to be worth it. Um, it's only a couple of pages long, but <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um. And then suddenly I saw it with only a slight turning to mark its rise to the surface. This is actually not the, the, on the monolith. This is the actual creature coming up with only a slight turning to mark its rise to the surface. The thing slid into view above the dark waters, vast polyphemous like and loathsome. It darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith about which it flung its gigantic scaly arms. The while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. I think I went mad then. <laughs> just so beautifully crafted like, he, he had the, the right name story, is what i'm saying <laughs> I, what did you I say? did have a favorite quote of the second book story so uh, okay, remind me good. you can let me know um what that one was and then um the last thing that i have written down we've uh talked a lot about already um but i want to um get each person's like kind of final word on what um what you think was the narrator insane and imagined this happening went insane because of this or like dreamed the whole thing or something I, mean, I honestly feel like it was kind of a combination he <laughs> <laughs> uh, was definitely insane um but it's more like at what point? <laughs> he was insane. He transported to another dimension. I like that theory. <laughs> I, I kind of like a mix. Like, yeah. Karen mentioned the, oops, sorry, the Bermuda Muda triangle here, if I can talk. And I kind of like that, that he slipped into that. And then somewhere in his delirium, he ended up out of the Bermuda triangle and found by Americans. Navy, I guess, um, ships. Well, and I'm still a little crushed that we didn't get a Pirates of the Caribbean movie about the Bermuda Triangle. Just, right? just oh my gosh, yes! Like of all things that should have been about the Bermuda Triangle, it would have fit. <laughs> Don't perfectly. give up on it though. They keep adding more movies every time I think they're done. <laughs> yeah, and the last one was. <laughs> I, I haven't actually watched past the third one because. And I'm told that the fourth and fifth are much better I just, than the third one. But. I just totally derailed your perfectly good discussion. I am so sorry. <laughs> Back on track. <laughs> All right, we're so. Sorry. I do need. I will need out about about 
in, at, at, at the at the hour just just so you know yeah that's fine um so yeah um i my inclination is that um he went insane while at sea and the whole thing never happened but he he went mad from being stranded at sea i think the idea that he's that he easily got away from his captors raises red flags <laughs> to begin That's with true. it makes me i i hadn't thought about that I until having this conversation that back, back then you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean like is there any real need to have like constant 24 hours i mean it's true it is true if you have um i so mean if you don't want them to like get out and kill you you don't want them to like yeah, keep them yeah you, you don't want them to mutiny if you if yeah. you have lifeboats that they could steal with a full provision of food and water for several days yeah <laughs> you would depend on depend on how short your staff was <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah maybe they all got injured too badly after whatever war the battle they took place and taking the ship <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are uh, within 20 minutes of, of our ending time. So let's go ahead and move on to the statement of Randolph, of Randolph Carter, not at, of, I know preposition. Okay. Um, All oh, right. <laughs> the, Karen, did you want to do the, the overview of statement of Randolph yeah, Carter? I'll give a quick you want me to? Summary. What? I'll do a quick little summary about it. Go yeah. for it. Okay, so, but much as I could gather, the summary was, the guy uh, retelling an account, like, to like, a, I'm assuming he was talking to guards or judge or somebody, of an account of what happened to him and his friend Warren as they went into a grave deep, deep underground to, to find something. And Warren never came out. <laughs> Very true. Um, <laughs> incidentally, both of these stories, according to the end notes, were based on dreams that he had. Um, That's really cool the the first one um i believe it was just the fact of being in a boat at sea and then land suddenly appearing underneath him that inspired it the second one he was actually writing um he has um had some writing writer relief friends um that they, they would um, write letters back and forth to each other and he was describing to them um and it, from the sounds of things, they would send like letters to each other kind of en masse. Everybody would get the same letters over and over. So that it was basically like a snail mail group chat. Um, and he was, he was describing this dream to them and his description of this dream, he started describing in the first person in the letter as though he was explaining it to them. And that became the first draft of this story. Um, and then, of course, with the story, he shifted it to being describing it to um, a police force, detectives, whoever, whoever's trying to figure out if he murdered his friend. Um, so, um, other than a better term. <laughs> what I said, for lack of a better term, <laughs> right. other than that, um, I have, like I said earlier, I took much fewer notes on this one than I did on the first one. Um, and may or may not have only finished reading it today during break at work. Um, <laughs> so um, is there anything that particularly stood out to anybody as, as a, uh, an interesting part? Most of, my, most of my intriguing parts of it come at the very end. Um, the, the descriptions along the way, I'm just like. I thought he did a really good job, actually. So, so there's. It, it reminded me of how um, Bram Stoker uses descriptions in Dracula. And there are a couple of moments in Dracula in particular where he, it, there are a couple of particular moments, I mean, where he winds up the suspense to a moment by giving us a slow, a deliberately slow paced description that if you take the time to read all of it, it really does slow you down for that jump scare. And the description themselves, like, I really liked his descriptions in this, in this one. It, 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 I would have liked, if I'd had time, I would have liked to try to, to depict some of the scenes that he was describing. Because, yeah, like, like, I felt like there were multiple senses engaged. It really put you right, right there. Um, 
And it also seemed like a really interesting technique because it was like he was focusing on everything but the things that we were really curious about, which was what actually happened. And I think that really worked as a storytelling technique to wind us up to the, to the moment at the end. I got distracted by my baby girl. Um, <laughs> yeah, that actually, not only is that really interesting, that actually um, kind of makes it click in my brain why this story didn't resonate with me as much um, because my brain is scattered all over everywhere. And I tend not to read things in order. And when something just gets into a long descriptive part, even though like if I stop and read it, I really mm -hmm. appreciate the value of it. I tend to kind of, I read like, I read here and then I read here and then I'm over here and then I'm up here again <laughs> and reviewing and then I'm here and then I'm over here and then I'm over here. So I don't get that like lead up to a jump scare because I can't keep my eyes focused in one place because my brain doesn't stay focused in one place. Um, so yeah, that's probably why until toward the end, it that's the part that really, where, when it kind of, um, reach that climax is when it really started to grab me um and before that I was just kind of that's why it took me until today when I was like okay I really need to finish reading this because it just wasn't so grabbing cool. me as much in the first so place because cool. I had started it mm -hmm. and the week before and <laughs> <laughs> it just I wasn't getting into this particular story so it's definitely when I feel like it has to pique your interest for you to really like be driven to finish it pretty quickly which is like i mean okay. it's only like five pages <laughs> like it's not like <laughs> even <free>. still <laughs> if it's not up your alley no matter what for the length it's not gonna be an easy read true um it reminded me so the concept of old like ancient graveyard with this unspeakable thing deep under it that's older than anybody knows kind of thing anybody read neil gaiman's the graveyard book i haven't it's actually um something that's been recommended to me there's before, a, I it's actually read. so good it's so good it's the sweetest little book but there's a similar thing there's a very similar thing in that story. And now I'm kind of wondering if he got the idea from Lovecraft, actually. That'd be quite, that, I love, I love, um, obviously not like people stealing ideas from each other, but I love how artists yeah, yeah. build on other well, artists' ideas. The whole, the whole, the graveyard book, the whole, I, sorry, I'm so derailing no, this again. No, go for it. <laughs> it. It started as that kind of thing. So it is the Jungle Book but retold so instead of instead of so in the jungle book Mowgli like wanders into the jungle and gets raised by the animals in the graveyard book a little baby wanders into a graveyard and gets raised by the ghosts oh. okay. okay so he started it even the title is a reference to a book that he got the idea from so it oh. wouldn't surprise me if there were other other things that he got ideas from but yeah the, that idea that was used to great effect at several points in that story the idea of the graves being portals to to another dimension or you know these deep ancient ancient evil things possibly being under some of the graves yeah right cool um so, yeah i as a as a great connoisseur of um fan fiction um i i love how even just like one prompt or one one mm -hmm. concept can spark so many varieties of stories so like even though you know mm -hmm. he, he can start with like taking even even if he was building on the same idea that Lovecraft started with obviously yeah, yeah. not the same story and no his sweet, style is not the same as Lovecraft's <laughs> style at all <laughs> it's a very sweet children's book right <laughs> that happens to also have ghosts and vampires in it I mean <laughs> I mean <laughs> um, Lisa what were you starting to say oh uh, um oh geez yeah I was gonna I have like three things I want to say about the book and I'm just like trying to wait <laughs> wait to work it in um but you just reminded me of like like integrating things I was watching a YouTube uh be amazed video about death like mm -hmm. things that happen after death and one of the things was they found a I think it's um a swamp I think um 
or a marsh where it actually preserved a body for like a thousand years. And so it kind of like when I read that part in that story about how some bodies don't even decay after thousands of years, I'm like, they actually found bodies like that. So I thought that was really cool. And it was kind of a swampy setting too, wasn't it? It was. Mm -hmm. was, Yeah. Yeah. You kept talking about the swamp. Outside the swamp. Yeah. (laughs) So it kind of like hit my brain like that. Yeah. I can see that see why that would be um uh karen were you the one who said that you had a favorite quote for this i no. did oh lisa you did i knew somebody did i, did. I moved I my screen i moved my screen and now everybody isn't situated in the same places so. <laughs> yeah it doesn't really have a lot to do with the whole like i feel very goosebump vibe from this story like yeah like yeah. it's like very goosebump vibe for me but um, I, I just like the way he did it, but it's, it's the, the beat it, for God's sake, put back the slab and beat it, Carter. And then something in the boyish slang of my evidently stricken uh, companion unleashed my faculties, which, it, I don't know, the, the boyish language got I know, me. That, like, that, that's that, so dated. Yes, well, and th- but it also, it jumped out, it is very dated, but it also jumped out at me, the fact that he, like, in this, time of crisis just kind of reverted to the slang that he mm-hmm. grew up using instead of to the like refined mm-hmm. adult language he usually mm-hmm. used and it exactly. it resonates it makes a lot of sense that that would happen yeah um, and yeah. I like the idea that that hearing him start talking in this like younger way than he usually does is what kicked him into gear and like oh my gosh I need to actually move very realistic yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah um so my big question is what do you think he saw? Maybe like he being Warren, of course. Uh, just to... <laughs> maybe mm-hmm. like a um, like a underworld entrance or something like that. If he's talking about um, like a creature by the description that he gave just by the voice and everything and what Warren is supposed to have seen. It's almost like Frankenstein-esque maybe. Okay. I can see that. Did anybody else, did, does anybody have anything that you specifically like pictured him seeing? <clears throat> so like when I think of something like that is too horrible to describe I guess is the way the book put it I mostly see like um like shadow like shadows that like have like a wave shadow effect on it that makes no sense but like they filter wave and it's like they get a a lighter gray aura around them that shifts differently than they do and they've got the red demonic eyes like that would be something that would be too too horrified to explain as so i mm-hmm. i would feel like he saw something like maybe like underwater world shadow kind of thing right okay. i think that it definitely feels to me like he's like it's some type of being um and if it's in a like in the at the bottom of a graveyard it's something that's associated with some some being that feeds off of death is my is my thought or souls okay. or something like that so my thought my my thought would be like some kind of ancient god that has made its home some some like really powerful being that has made its home down here um and what you know what we the one piece of information that we're not given is what lures his friend down here to unearth this so i mean maybe maybe he thinks that maybe he misunderstands the nature of what's under here and he thinks there's some sort of power source or something like that i don't know i'd really right. like another an, a companion story that tells us what the friend expected because there's another there's another shade of horror to that too where it's just like all of these things were true of this but what he got was something completely different in a in a scary scary way um yeah i feel like i feel like whatever it is it is some very ancient entity that is probably there's a reason it's under a graveyard it's feeding off of death or that's keeping it that's keeping it there or something like that i don't think it it feels too powerful to be like a ghost of somebody who is buried in the graveyard yeah Right. No, I think it's something that, that enjoys torture as well because mm-hmm. like it says you fool Warren is dead at the end. Like Yeah. 
Although somehow it knew to, how to talk on the phone. <laughs> the the whole fact of him like dragging this phone and all of this cord in the phone <laughs> wire behind him that he's laying down as he goes. And like because of how I skip around at first, I thought that he was just laying the wire to find his way back out. And then I realized that they had mm. two phones and I was like, oh my gosh, they just like invented cell phones. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's here with a cell phone <laughs> well necessarily he's pretty far underground if you have reception <laughs> right. um okay who's your carrier i, I want to use them scary, though. if there was a version where where it was cell phones and he hears the voice but he looks down and there was no reception <gasps> oh my gosh that's so creepy oh that'd be so creepy that same thing could happen if like he like the wire snapped back first oh yeah 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 or something yeah. and then he heard yep. that yep 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 um so my my brain um jumps between images um as or did as I was reading this I was just kind of like picturing one sci-fi thing and another and um my understanding of Cthulhu even though I haven't actually read the story this later in this book um and um mentally I always link Cthulhu and the Ood from Doctor Who um Fair. <laughs> they're like the, 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 the kind gentle smaller Cthulhu <laughs> um and then I was bouncing between that and um some beings in Babylon 5 that I don't want to talk about too much because I have Lisa and Karen watching that right now. Um, <laughs> in theory, if they ever come back to watch the next episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, they're called the Shadows and they um, their ships kind of um, absorb light rather than reflecting it so that even in space they end up as a darker hole in the middle of space. Um, and so I, I was just kind of jumping in between all those different thoughts. Um, but then Erica, you were talking about um, if it was this ancient entity. And so this is just from a really, really fast Google search right now. Um, they talked about the, the tablet that he had, had um, something that looks like it came from India. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I looked up and there is um, a god called Agni or Agni. Um, that um, is a Sanskrit word meaning fire and connotes um, the fire god of Hinduism, um, who's the guardian deity of the southeast direction and typically found in southeast corners of Hindu temples and um, is one of the five inner um, imper impermanent elements along with space, water, air, and earth. So it might um, not be that one, but it could be. It could but yeah, be not necessarily that one. That's just the first one that came yeah. up in association yeah. with death. Um, but like, if it was something like that, something, yeah, something yeah. related to like Hindu mythology would be yeah. interesting, in my opinion. Although mm -hmm. I think, um, although he got ideas from a lot of mythology, the actual creatures that Lovecraft like to create were um like what if the mythology was not scary enough <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking um is there anything else that anybody wanted to say about either stories now that Ooh, I can hear um, <laughs> so, so for next time, we're reading the next two stories, facts concerning the late Arthur German and his family, and something I don't know how to pronounce, Celephase, Celephase, C-E-L-E-P-H-A, I with an umlaut, S. Celephase? Sure. We can look up how to pronounce it as part of our reading. <laughs> Do that, yes. yeah. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> hey, how far did you get on your projects? I did two and a half hearts. I have a whole entire flower going now. Yay! Yeah, it I have finished pouring all of my resin. I finished the shading. Nice. Ooh, so cute. cute. I just I love it. Oh I love him. He looks more defined. Yes. Oh. I need to name oh, him. Nice. I love it. Oh, so that's so pretty. It. Not the perrins. <laughs> I, I, I'm still <laughs> laughing at perrins. <laughs> I got the, the rose in the crystal. I've got the gummy bears. 
I got the nice. tags. Nice, Ooh. nice. Ooh. To get some, uh, some hearts. All right. So in theory, next time, two weeks from now on the 15th, um, the day after we need those hearts, um, <laughs> we will, we will um, be discussing these two stories. We'll be, for, as far as the five of us are concerned, we'll still be meeting here on Zoom, but we will be streaming onto YouTube instead of Facebook. And on YouTube, I find it easier to um, read the chat messages. Um, but um, that is the plan. I'm going to get this uploaded to YouTube tonight in theory. And um, I will see you all in a couple weeks. I'll see some of you sooner than that. Yes. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.